earlier this week, we made a video covering seven tips and tricks to make your legend onslaught runs more consistent, including the best defense upgrades, how to spawn trap enemies, and so much more. Making it to level 50 is no joke, and your builds can be the difference between a wipe and your fire team getting their clear. This was a highly requested topic from our last video, so today I'll be showcasing what I consider to be the best onslaught builds for each class. These are highly potent builds that have been battle tested by yours truly, combining ad clear, survivability, and raw damage output to make your journey to level 50 as smooth as possible. I'm above, and if you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's get into it. This video will be split into two segments, the first covering our ad clear builds, and the second covering DPS loadouts that will help alleviate pressure in boss fights. Ad clear is by far the most important part of Onslaught, because when you fall behind on enemy spawns, things can quickly spiral out of control and send you back to orbit. With that said, you'll also need burst damage for the boss waves to help you take down things like Briggs, Tormentors, and Champions that can quickly end your runs. So here is an overarching tip. Bring a strong exotic primary weapon that can carry your ad clear, freeing up your heavy slot for burst damage on high value targets. Exotic primaries also generate insane amounts of heavy ammo for you and your fire team, which eliminates the need for ammo generation exotics like Cenotaph altogether. First up, we have our Hunters. I've seen a lot of people on the Orpheus rig hype train this week, and for good reason. It's easy to use, refunds 50% of your super, and generates a ton of orbs in the process. This is definitely a great option, but what if I told you that Jerfalcon's Halberk not only provides ridiculous ad clear, but it can also rival the Orpheus rigs for super regen when paired with our exotic primary of choice today. Graviton Lance has received several major buffs over the years and is made to shine in ad dense activities like Onslaught. The combination of Jerfalcon's ability to make enemies volatile and the cosmology perk from Graviton Lamps is just absolutely disgusting for ad clear. Volatile damages entire groups of enemies, giving you free cleanup kills on trash mobs that start a chain reaction of void explosions from Graviton Lance. And the cool part is that these void projectiles can just chain off each other infinitely, locking down entire enemy spawn points on their own. But this is just the start of what makes this build top tier. Jerfalcons grants void weapons 10 seconds of volatile rounds when exiting invisibility, so simply dodge and then use Graviton Lance to begin chaining explosions. We're going to pair this with Vanishing Step and Stylish Executioner for our aspects, both of which are crucial for feeding our gameplay loop. Vanishing Step makes you invisible when dodging, and starts the permanent invisibility and volatile chaining. Stylish Executioner states that killing suppressed, volatile, or weakened enemies grants invisibility and true sight. So when we dodge and make ourselves invisible, we give volatile rounds to Graviton Lance, and when those enemies die, Stylish Executioner makes us go invisible repeatedly and infinitely refreshes our 10 second timer. And as you can see here, the ad clear with this combo is stupidly strong, and and provides insane levels of super regen due to the cosmology per counting as exotic primary weapon damage. This allows you to cycle multiple tethers in a single phase with the added benefit of absolutely slaying out for your team. As for our fragments, we have two that are absolutely essential to this build's gameplay loop, the first being Echo of Starvation to grant you devour when picking up orbs of power, and the second being Echo of Persistence to increase the duration of both your devour and invisibility timers. The other fragments are totally personal preference, though I typically go with Obscurity for invisibility when performing finishers, and Undermining which allows my void grenades to weaken enemy targets. This enhances our gameplay loop even further, while providing top tier survivability with Devour. Key armor mods include Harmonic Siphon to generate orbs of power on void weapon final blows. I also recommend heavy ammo finders and scouts, because as I noted earlier in the video, exotic primaries generate stupid amounts of heavy ammo for for you and your fire team. I also recommend scavenger and surge mods to match your heavy of choice, which in this case is Apex Predator to give me burst damage on bosses. And last but not least, I recommend powerful attraction to automatically pick up nearby orbs of power when dodging for easy devour procs, and time dilation to increase the duration of our surge mods. 
Now, this obviously isn't a damage loadout, so I'm gonna quickly touch on an easy DPS strategy for you guys. I personally find the boss fights to be the easiest part of Onslaught, so I'm not gonna deep dive as much into the DPS builds as I am with the ad clear side. Rockets and GLs both work extremely well for boss damage, with some of my favorites being Apex Predator, Edge Transit, and Dragon's Breath. It's pretty hard to beat Celestial Nighthawk in terms of damage supers right now, and I actually have a simple tip that makes it even better. Start the damage phase by shooting Dragon's Breath, then pop your Golden Gun with Celestial Nighthawk. But before firing, you actually want to swap your loadout to Lucky Pants and then fire your Golden Gun. This keeps the damage from Nighthawk, but allows you to start a DPS rotation with Lucky Pants immediately after. And by the time you've swapped your loadout and fired your Goldie, your Dragon's Breath will be auto-loaded, which means we can fire a second rocket and then use a hand cannon like Warden's Law for DPS with Lucky Pants while our rocket is ticking on the bomb. If you don't have Warden's Law, you can use Apex Predator and Malfeasance as an alternative setup and achieve similar results. This setup absolutely cooks and is extremely easy to do with just a little practice. The only important thing to note is that your aspects and fragments must be in the same order for each build, and I've got you guys covered with all three Hunter links down in the description below. Moving on to our Warlocks, we're going to focus on a tried and true Well of Radiance build that will hard carry your teams in Legend Onslaught. Now trust me, I'm just as bored of Well as you guys are, but Legend Onslaught has proven to be extremely difficult for a lot of teams, and you're going to need a meta build to help you clear level 50. Now, most of you would probably expect either Cenotaph or Sunbracers to be the exotic of choice here, but just like the Orpheus rigs for Hunters, Super Regen exotics are just insanely powerful in horde modes like Onslaught. And for that reason, we'll be running a Phoenix Protocol build that has the capability to fully refund your super before it's even expired. This build is built for spamming wells and chaining ignitions, giving you top tier ad clear and survivability all in one. And just like our Hunter build, we'll be using a top tier exotic primary weapon to help feed our super energy and generate heavy ammo. Based on data provided by GM Report, Sunshot actually has the most kills of any weapon in Legend Onslaught right now. It can sustain ad clear on its own and is the perfect weapon to showcase the insanely powerful solar artifact mods this season. This means we no longer need something like a machine gun for ad clear, which frees up our heavy slot for weapons that can and take down tankier targets. The build itself is extremely simple. Phoenix Protocol refunds up to 50% of your super energy when securing kills inside of a well. And when we're not in our well, we'll be using the healing grenade for on-demand restoration times two, thanks to our first aspect of choice in Touch of Flame. The second aspect is personal preference, but I opted for Icarus Dash for movement with this build. With all of that said, it's the fragments that make this build stupidly powerful in Onslaught. First up, we have Ember of Combustion, which causes enemies defeated by solar supers to ignite enemy targets. Now, the crazy part is that every solar kill that you get while inside of your well causes this interaction to happen and generates insane amounts of super energy due to the high damage explosions. This means we have Phoenix Protocol to refund the first 50% of our super and Ember of Combustion to refund the rest, giving us our super back before it even expires. Next, we have Ember of Benevolence, which grants a 400% increase to all abilities when applying Cure, Radiant, or Restoration to your teammates, which happens constantly in a Horde mode. This fragment single-handedly cycles your abilities with ease and allows you to become the ultimate support warlock for your team. I also went with Ember of Solace to extend our Radiant and Restoration timers to a maximum of 15 seconds, which will be easy to do with our last fragment in Ember of Empyrean, which allows you to extend Restoration and Radiant buffs on Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows. So simply throw a Healing Grenade at your feet and let Sunshot go to work to keep these buffs up at all times. Key armor mods include Harmonic Siphon to generate orbs of power with Sunshot, Heavy Ammo Finder and Scout to generate insane amounts of heavy ammo for your fire team, Solar Surges and Harmonic Scavenger on the boots for bonus damage to your solar weapons while maximizing your heavy drops, with the rest of the mods on your other pieces of armor being totally personal preference. This build gives you insane amounts of survivability outside of a well and allows you to single-handedly sustain your team with wells thanks to the combo 
combination of Phoenix and Ember of Combustion. Moving on to our DPS loadout, the Apotheosis Veil will be our exotic of choice here. This helmet was reworked to provide near infinite ability regen for 8 seconds after casting our super. So when we use our well, we get 8 seconds to spam fusion grenades at the boss, similar to how Starfire Protocol worked prior to its nerfs. Dragon's Breath is my personal rocket of choice here, but any rocket will do. Simply fire Dragon's Breath at the boss and spam fusion grenades and special ammo until the 8 second time is over and your rocket has auto-loaded itself. If you want a more in-depth explanation of how this works, I'll have a link down to a previous video where I covered this build more in-depth down in the description below. And last but not least, we have our Titans. This final build is arguably the most powerful build on the entire list because it covers ad clear, boss damage, and survivability all in one. Banner of War is simply the best of the best because of the synergy you get from melee-based exotics combined with this subclass's aspects and fragments. First up, we have Into the Fray, which provides Woven Mail for an on-demand 45% damage resist that stacks with Tier 10 Resilience. Pair this with Banner of War for a continuous source of healing and up to a 40% bonus to your melee damage, and you have the perfect recipe for success in Onslaught. Combo this with Thread of Fury for melee energy when a Tangle damages an enemy, Thread of Warding for Woven Mail when picking up Orbs of Power, Thread of Transmutation to generate Tangles when you defeat an enemy with a weapon while Woven Mail is active, and Threat of Generation, which refunds grenade energy every time you deal damage. This all works in perfect harmony because they not only keep you alive, they also cycle your grenade and melee energy to help you devastate priority targets. The Grapple Grenade is key to this build's success, providing insane movement benefits and top tier damage stacking. The melee you gain mid grapple does massive amounts of damage, especially when you can land a 1-2 punch shotgun just before hitting the enemy. And Threat of Generation allows us to get our energy back, which means we can do this over and over and over again. And as I alluded to earlier, this all synergizes perfectly with both Worm God's Caress and my personal exotic of choice in the Synthesis as it provides a 165% damage bonus when surrounded by three or more enemy combatants, which is like all the time in Onslaught. Our weapon of choice with this build is quite simple. As long as you have a one-two punch shotgun to enhance your melee damage even further, you're pretty much good to go. You can then supplement this with any exotic of your choosing, whether it be an exotic primary like Sunshot or an exotic heavy like Galahorn, allowing you to deal more damage from range on waves with explosive enemies or elevated bosses like a Shrieker. Otherwise, the typical one-two punch damage setup works incredibly well. With all of that said, this build is much more dependent on armor mods for success, and without getting into the nitty gritty of everything you need to know, the important ones are heavy handed to generate orbs of power on melee final blows, which provides us with an instant source of woven mail, and ability regen mods like impact induction, absolution, outreach, and several others that can keep our abilities rolling, allowing you to devastate champions and bosses like it's nothing. And as always, I'll leave the dim link down in the description below so you guys can deep dive the other armor mods that we use in this build in your own time. Well guys, that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Be sure to let me know how these builds work for you, and what other builds you guys have been using to tear up Onslaught this week. Anyways, that's it from me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.